Right. Hi everybody, I'm Dominic Clew, um, software engineer at Red Hat working on the Foreman project. I've um, been here a few years but only started working on Foreman uh, for about the last 11 months or so. We're in the sort of history of the project, it's quite young, quite uh, evolving quite rapidly at the moment. Um, my background is in systems management, particularly Puppet. I uh, used to do consultancy work around Puppet um, and software as a service configuration using Puppet. Um, what I want to do today is just introduce you to Foreman itself, show you where it can help and fit into your infrastructure. Um, what I also hope to do, um, if my 3G and the VPN stay running throughout the talk, is to give you a demo of installing a virtual machine using Foreman, and also show you how quickly you can get started with Foreman itself. Sorry if the slides make you feel a bit seasick. It's uh, a bit new to me. There's going to be lots of whizzy animations flying around. So Foreman helps in three main areas. Um, it's the, the first one is as a provisioning tool. It's there to help you install your operating system, whether that's CentOS, Debian-based, or Solaris even. Uh, we support preceding, kick-starting, jump-start, OpenSUSE, all sorts. It's there to help you install the operating system, um, perform the initial kickstart and setting up a VM, DHCP, DNS, all of the vital services that you would do when creating a new host. Helps you with configuration, it integrates heavily with Puppet. And finally, it helps you monitor the service for the host as uh, throughout its lifetime. Uh, we support a number of both uh, public and private clouds, services such as OpenStack, uh, Rackspace, CC2, and of course bare metal itself. We can provision seamlessly on any of these. Puppet is our main integration point for configuration. Um, we are working on Chef support at the moment. It's a big focus for our current release, uh, current development release 1.3, to enable support of other configuration systems. Integration today with Puppet is very strong. And as such, we take reports and facts and information back from Puppet to tell you the state of your infrastructure throughout the lifetime of the host, not just for initial build. So the architecture of Foreman is built around a Rails application. We have Foreman in the center, Ruby on Rails, with its own database and interfacing externally to systems such as AD or LDAP for authentication, optionally. It provides a web interface primarily, um, but also a first-class API, which I'll come to later. Externally, we have a sub-project called Smart Proxies. Now, these allow us to integrate with your existing infrastructure, whether that's DHCP, Puppet, DNS, and it allows Foreman to run actions when you create or destroy hosts, to add DNS records, or to set up a TFTP file ready for Pixie This is the core of Foreman's uh, integration. I've mentioned Puppet already a couple of times. We're what's called an ENC to Puppet, an external node classifier. So when a Puppet agent checks in on a new host, we're able to tell Puppet which modules and which classes we should be applying to your new box. So this box with host name foo is an Apache box. It gets the Apache module, it gets the NTP one. And we can also define parameters. It's in this data center, <coughs> therefore its NTP server is this machine. So that's quite a powerful bit of functionality. We get a lot of information back from Puppet as well, the reports, the facts, all the information about the host, uh, so it's dynamic. This is our current uh, sort of cloud and virtualization support list. Um, although some of these me has missed off uh, libvirt and KVM. Uh, Google Compute Engine is new in the 1.3 release. Um, I was quite hoping to announce 1.3 today. Uh, unfortunately, we had a package build issue late last night, um, but there will be a release with Google, Google Compute 
supporting it soon. We support a variety of both image and network boot based, what we call computer resources. So EC2 and Rackspace, for example, are image based, while others, bare metal, um, OpenStack and VMware, would be uh, pixie based. All of these are transparent to the user. And all of that talks to the central Rails application. So the inventory is where we get information and store information about all of your hosts. It's meant to be a central source of truth for your environment. Uh, many people use this as a CMDB. Uh, they use it perhaps uh, as an equivalent to puppet store configs. So if you want to know for your configuration where all of your backend servers are or your database servers, you can query Foreman for that information. We get information from the host, such as from Factor, Puppet's fact mechanism. So we know your disk utilization. We know your memory usage. We know how many disks you've got or what operating system, you, system you're running. And also your custom facts. So you can expand this and use it to describe and store information, um, whatever you can imagine. This is the slightly old uh, Foreman 1.1 dashboard page. Uh, it's showing what hosts we've got in our infrastructure and clearly how many are uh, in, say, error states. So the last puppet run was unsuccessful. Um, which hosts are out of sync so we can run puppet in what's called no-op mode and find out what drift you've got in your infrastructure. Reporting is a puppet mechanism. Uh, this tells us the latest uh, well, it gives us a report at the end of every individual Puppet run. So this is a list of all of the changes that have been made uh, by Puppet. Diffs of files. So when Puppet removes an entry from a file, you'll, you'll get a diff in the web UI. Uh, we're also able to do email notifications. So when a host does, does report uh, a bad error after a Puppet run, you can get an e email immediately or summaries at the end of the day. This screen here is an individual report from Puppet. We can see all of the log messages that you'd see if you're running Puppet interactively. Um, and some graphs, every, everything needs graphs. Uh, this is the amount of time taken for each of different Puppet resource types. Um, so you can the table on the right. The node classifier, as I said, is our way of telling Puppet what this machine should look like. We have a concept of host groups in Foreman. These, uh, you would assign a host to a single host group, but the host groups themselves can be hierarchical. So you can create, uh, for example, a base host group that might contain the standard configuration for your entire environment. You may, in your base host group, uh, deploy NTP. You may deploy standard users or SSH keys. Uh, standard security settings that you need in every environment. On top of that, you could then start to layer different roles of machines. You could have web servers as a sub-host group of that, uh, building these into a hierarchy. So from each of these, we can assign classes to individual hosts or groups of hosts, which allows you a sort of batch operation. You can immediately change your entire uh, server infrastructure from a single host group. And as I said, we've got support for passing parameters into your Puppet infrastructure. So an NTP is a great example. You're likely to have a server parameter on your Puppet module, your NTP Puppet module. But the value of your NTP server is going to change depending on where you are. You could tie that to a location or a type of server, a host group in Foreman. Or you could even override it on a per host basis. You can say, here's a default value for this parameter. But for this particular host, where the FQDN is this, I want the value of the parameter to be this instead. And individual users who are using the Foreman UI can override this when we go create a new host. So you can easily, easily create exceptions to your configuration. We do support multiple puppet environments as well. This is quite powerful if you want dev staging and production. And we also support multiple puppet servers. 
not tied to just one sitting on the former box. We can manage many puppet servers. So this is a view of the new host screen, or editing a host. We have all of the available modules in this puppet environment that we can select from. These are the ones currently set up on the host, and we can remove those if they're assigned to this host, or select additional classes from the screen on the right. On the parameters tab that we can't see here, I'll show you in a demo later, we can see all of the puppet parameters for form and setting. So provisioning is a big part of Foreman. It's not necessary. Many people use Foreman just for the puppet integration or the puppet reporting. But the provisioning ties in really well with the rest of Foreman. It means you can go from having no host at all to a host newly created on your compute resource, your cloud, all the way through to having Puppet installed, having your certificate signed, and having it set up, ready, running Puppet, so you can log straight in. It's part of the entire, sort of all-in-one workflow with Foreman. We try and support the different compute resources, whether they're image-based or pixie-based, in the same way. It's really important to us that the user gets a seamless experience, whether they're deploying a new four-socket big box or whether they're deploying a microserver on EC2. It should be the same experience for the user and they should get the same result back at the end. So we primarily support Pixie booting. Uh, we do this through our deep integration with DHCP and TFTP. We set up kickstarts. We have version kickstart files and provisioning templates. And we can do, because they are ERB, Ruby style templates, we can do really quite advanced things with conditionals and loops in the templates themselves. Uh, we do support most. Um, not listed is Windows. We do have a couple of users uh, who have managed to get it to work and do fully automated Windows installs as well through Foreman. So the smart proxy, I was saying, integrates with all of your external services. It's there to integrate with DHCP and DNS. And it's part of the new host creation. So if a user logs into the former portal and they say, I want a new host, we orchestrate various actions in the creation of that host, whether that's creating your VM on your cloud environment, whether that's creating the DNS record corresponding to the IP that we've found in your DHCP range. And this is, uh, sort of, it's a, it fits into the complete life cycle of your machine informant. So when you destroy the machine, we do the same actions but in reverse. We'll destroy the DHCP reservation that we made. We'll delete the extraneous files on your TFTP server as pixie menus. And we'll remove the DNS entry once we're done and destroy the VM. It's also an extensible part of Foreman. I'll talk about plugins in a bit, but there is a plugin called Hooks that allows you to add your own actions in. Perhaps you need to register your new machine with an external data service, maybe your own central inventory. So a user goes in, clicks a new host, but you can add your own script into this orchestration process. We'll go and register this new host in our inventory. And all of this is done at new host creation and at destroy. So I think at this point I want to give you a quick demo of how easy it is to create hosts uh, from a user point of view. Um, I will hopefully be able to connect over my 3G <laughs> to my own instance. Um, and we'll see if we can deploy a new CentOS VM. If I can find my cursor. You can see the UI has changed a little since the screenshots were taken. This is uh, Foreman 1.3, which is the current development release. 1.2 is for current stable. That's it though. It's, this is a VM that I created a little earlier, um, but I'll use for a demo later. So we've got the familiar dashboard page. This shows us 
a view of our entire infrastructure, every host that's registered to Foreman, and its last report state. So these are all the reports coming in. That's just a chart showing the distribution of hosts. All of the configuration, the deep configuration is under the more menu, so you can define information such as the domains in your environment, all of your host groups, uh, subnets, uh, all, all the deep configuration there. These are the main parts of the application, and you can restrict user access to just these sort of views. Function number 3G is very slow. Here we go. So this is a list of all the hosts in my particular environment. Um, you can just create a new host through here. These are all virtual hosts running on libvirt and KVM. We can see their current state, so some of these are in build state, which means they're ready to pixie boot up. Some of them are out of sync because they're actually turned off. We haven't received any public reports in the last uh, 30 minutes or so, so we, we declare we don't know what state they're in. This page is sort of wizard through the new host creation process. Um, I'm going to start off um, by defining a name. And here we have the selection which is meant to be sort of transparent of where we're going to deploy this, whether it's a bare metal machine, which will identify by its MAC address, or whether it's going to be on EC2 or libvirt in this case. This is going to change the form subtly. We do have a new virtual machine tab, and we'll have a look at the parameters there in a second. Now, my host group is going to pre-populate 90% of this form. So for my environment, my standard host group, I know what my puppet master is going to be. I know what my subnet and domain are going to be. So with one click, we fill in most of the information we need for a new host. Here we see the Puppet classes that we're going to apply through the Puppet ENC. All of these are inherited from my host group. These are standard classes that apply to every machine on my host. In this case, in this case I set up M collectives, <coughs> some proxy settings, and some sort of base OS tweaks. Uh, I could add uh, additional classes here that are specific to this host. Um, so this becomes a bit of a unique machine when I start doing this. Um, I don't trust my DHCP server that much, so I'm going to change this. Um, we do have multi-domain support. You can build into any domain you like, and subnets as well. I'm going to select an OS that I've set up originally. Um, we don't do anything such as storing the install media itself. We we point to external sources. Um, but if there's time, I might show you uh, a new plugin later that integrates with Pulp for content management. So in this case, this is pointing out to the net, to a CentOS mirror. I can change the partition table, customize it for this individual host if I need to. Override passwords and so on. And we see down here, we've, we've got two templates that are assigned to this host. One is the provision template, which is the kickstart itself, and a Pixie Linux template. So we have a menu set up for TFTP. All of this you can as well set for your uh, inner host group if you want, if you have a standard OS. Now this screen changes a bit depending on where you're deploying. This is where the differences between the compute resources and the clouds comes into play. In this case, I'm going to set up some parameters for my libvirt network. Select an appropriate NAT network. Change some settings there. If you're using something image-based, such as EC2, you'll also be able to select the image that you, uh, that you use uh, for your operating system. If you're using EC2, you might have different security groups, uh, VPC, all sorts of settings will appear up here. And now we see the data that Foreman's pushing into your host. So this has been computed based on 
what we call matches. So we might say, well, this is a CentOS host, therefore it needs this configuration instead. Or perhaps this, this might be false, depending on whether it's uh, depending on the OS or depending on the location of the host. This is where I can customize my configuration as well. If I want to change it for this individual host, create a sort of one-off. I can change the value of any puppet parameter that Foreman's managing here. Add comments. In this case, I'm going to create it. When I click this button, what we're going to see is the orchestration kicking in. So the very first thing we'll do with a virtual machine is to create it on libvirt. That's vital to tell us the MAC address of the newly created VM, because we, we don't know that up front. Once we've got the MAC address, Foreman can then go set up your DHCP reservation. And with the DHCP reservation and IP, it can set up the DNS, and it can set up the TFTP menu. So it's a sort of ordered list of actions that we need to create new hosts. And as I said, it's extensible. I'll probably complete before my 3G catches on. Yes, I think it did. <laughs> so what you would normally see here on a fast connection is a green screen with all of the steps required for the orchestration. You'll see them completing, whether it's setting up TFTP files, setting up in RDs and VM Linux files, and here we have the newly created host. It's powered up. It's probably already pixie booting. We see the IP and other information that we set during the new host creation. And what I'm going to attempt now is VNC over 3G over a VPN. <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, support for both VNC and Spice. Uh, so if you're using libvirt or overt or rev, yeah, you'll see an embedded JavaScript-based VNC or Spice client in the browser. No fancy plugins or uh, programs needed on your machine. And by this point, it's probably in already installed for OS. There we go. <laughs> so this newly created VM has already pixie booted. It's got its IP. It's got its TFTP file that we've put on the pixie server, uh, the TFTP server via the smart proxy. And we've carried out all of the necessities, putting it in DNS, setting up our reservations, and booted the CentOS Anaconda. It's, I can't remember what stage it is, um, but at some point it will retrieve our kickstart file from Foreman. So we'll have templated a kickstart. In fact, we can go and have a look at that. Uh, the installer will pull this down, and we'll also set up things like puppet auto signing, ready for this specific host. So as soon as we do a puppet run, we're there. We have a certificate. No manual intervention required. I should stress that you don't need to use all of these bits. This is, this is the full-blown thing. This is what it's capable of. Um, we've got many users out there who aren't in environments where they can control DHCP. I was talking to you earlier about this. Um, we have a bit of integration with things such as iPixie and GPixie. You can get it, which are sort of small bootloaders that you can do to get around DHCP restrictions. You don't need to use DNS, obviously it's sensible. Um, and you don't need to use the compute resource integration in here. If you've got a provider, for example Zen Server, we don't support at the moment. Um, I'd love to, we talk about Zen later. If you'd love to write support for it, um, we'd love to merge it. <laughs> but in those cases, you can treat other machines as bare metal. You just need a MAC address. Um, what we can see on here, uh, we can preview the template that, uh, that Anaconda is getting. It refers to our external mirror, all of the packages that we're going to install, and a very short, um, sort of Geos style um, post install script. But setting up enough just to get the puppet agent running, just to get the puppet agent talking to the puppet master with its new certificate. And we reboot. We're done. 
Everything else you handle via Puppet, by your host group definition, and this gives you a dynamic infrastructure. You can change anything. So that's the basics of uh, form and provision and orchestration. While that's installing, let's try and go back to this. We've got full user support and RBAC in Foreman. Uh, our group support isn't so great at the moment, but we can define roles and associate them with fairly fine-grained permissions for which parts of the application a user is able to view, edit, create, and destroy. Uh, you can assign these to individual users, and your users can come out of Active Directory or any old app server. Uh, the group support is something we're working on ramping up at the moment. We can also change what users are able to access. We can restrict them not by which parts of the application they can access, but, but by which hosts and which resources. So somebody in one part of your organization or one location globally may only be able to access certain hosts. They may only be able to access certain environments or compute resources. You might not want somebody in APAC being able to deploy new hosts in EMEA. All of that you can do by various mechanisms, organizations, locations, and filters on users and foreman. Now we're really proud of our installer. It's a really quick way to get a complete, uh, complete foreman set up uh, really quickly, try it out, see what it can do for you. Um, many of us still use this for production type installations. Uh, they are, the installer is based on Puppet so set of Puppet modules that can set up Foreman, Smart Proxies, Puppet Masters um, in a scalable, so it can use Passenger and various technologies. Secure, it sets up SSL certificates by default. Um, sets up a full database PostgreSQL nowadays and gives you a fully working integrated Foreman and Puppet environment. Really easy to use. We've got a nice new utility called CAFO in Foreman 1.3. Uh, this is a little wrapper around Puppet, and it's, and it's an installer. It allows you to install Foreman or any Puppet-based application uh, by the CLI with answers files or interactively. Um, so if you've got a Puppet installer of your own, you might want to take a look at this. Hopefully we can demo that a bit later. It's a nice piece of technology. At the moment, we're pushing Foreman's extensibility. We're trying to get, trying to encourage uh, a plugin uh, community around the core application. Uh, Rails has got a feature called Engines that allows you to sort of create applications within applications and to extend the core Foreman app. So we're starting to see Foreman go in directions that <coughs> we ourselves might not want to implement. We if there's only so many of us on the core development team, only so many hours in the day. But we're seeing new and quite exciting applications for Foreman that allow people to extend Foreman and make use of its existing data in new ways. Um, so some of my favorites, um, Discovery is one. This is a uh, metal as a service type feature for Foreman. Instead of defining up front what your new host will be, it means you can go plug in a bunch of new servers, they'll show up in Foreman, and people can consume them as and when they need. So, so it allows a sort of self-service style hardware um, shop service. Hooks we mentioned already, and content I'd like to do a quick, very quick demo of um, a bit later, but this is the pulp integration, very early days. That's something that we wouldn't want to implement in core anyway. We, we could spend all, all day integrating with every application out there. Um, but it allows somebody else to develop a plugin independently of form and core. It allows them to integrate with a service we've no interest really in maintaining ourselves or distributing. But it allows the developers of a plugin to take advantage of information in Foreman, things like host groups. These two um, 
were written by CERN to help with their particular environment. Um, and I'm aware of other organisations who are using custom written plugins to just close the gap and integrate with their own infrastructure. Uh, the Catello project we integrate with uh, by a series of plugins as well. Uh, there is a list on the wiki, go, go have a browse. But there's many out there that we don't even know exist, that people have written in-house. We have a big push on the API at the moment. We've always had a basic API in Foreman, uh, and it, it's been okay. Um, if you're familiar with REST APIs, you'd look at it and think, that's a bit strange. It's exposing a few too many internals. So we're working on a new version, which means we can offer a stable platform to anybody who's integrating with Foreman today, and we can give you new shiny features, a fully RESTful API to every part of the application. So everything you could do through the UI, we're trying to expose equally and better through the API. We've got people wrapping up Foreman in self-service portals, um, using, yeah, using the API to find out about other hosts and the infrastructure from Puppet, all sorts of funky things. Um, the new CLI in Foreman 1.3 is based on this API. We actually generate some of the CLI commands through uh, automatically from the API documentation. Um, this is in preview stage at the moment. I hope it will be stable and usable, friendly for Foreman 1.4. But it's going to allow you to add Foreman into your existing scripts, into your existing processes. And we've got graphs, of course. Everything we can graph, we graph. Um, the community's grown a lot in the last year or so, um, at least while I've been watching. It's uh, quite phenomenal some days. Um, we've the IRC channel, Hash for Foreman, on Freenode, and the development channel are quite busy, especially in European hours. Uh, we are a European-centric team and community, which is unusual in the open source world, I guess. Um, we've also got a fantastic translation community that's appeared this year. Foreman 1.2, it's not that relevant for you lot, but uh, we now ship Foreman in about six different languages, and we've got a new community of contributors to the project through that. Um, and we've got active mailing lists, both users and development. And for general information, what's going on in the Foreman world, the Google Plus community is a great place to begin. It's where you hear about new blog entries or talks such as today coming up. Um, and this is a subset. We've got bigger names than those using Foreman today. <laughs> so if you want to take a look at Foreman, I urge you to look at the quick start. Um, this is on the home page of our website, theforeman.org. Click the blue button, I think, and there's a really simple installation I'm hoping to go through now with you, if there is time, um, to get a working Foreman proxy uh, Puppet Master infrastructure up and running. Uh, I've got two video tutorials that go along with this. Uh, part one covers the installation, is sort of what I'll go through now. And the second gets you up and running with Pixie booting, being able to install new hosts like we saw earlier. And of course, IRC and my mailing lists are great places to find out more. So before I dive, I don't know what the time constraints were. Have I got time? Yep, excellent. Um, so before I dive into a demo of a quick start installation, um, are there any questions? Done uh, how, oh. how easy is it to, uh, I mean, if we can have uh, drink the Kool Aid, as it were, uh, to kind of, you know, I mean, how is it kind of like, is it difficult to get away from Foreman if you started using it? I don't have the mic. Um, the question was, how easy is it to get away from Foreman? Um, good question. <laughs> so the API is probably your best bet to be able to export information again. Um, you can destroy your Foreman instance and all your VMs are still going to be running. The main information that Foreman is going to store that isn't elsewhere is the associations between hosts and groups. Um, and all of that you can query through the API. And you're just going to get JSON responses, but you could load back into your 
your new system, if you have an API for that. Um, the parameter information and things like the matches is going to be much harder to replicate. We're working on a new API for this for from a 1.3, that I'm hoping will be included, but that would allow you then to get the information that this FQTN has a slightly different parameter to the rest back out. If that answers your question. Um, yeah, so it's a similar thing. Uh, so Puppet also has a web based um, tool. Do you have something to compare what it's different, how it differs? So Puppet, uh, Puppet has Puppet dashboard. Um, it also, there is also the console in Puppet Enterprise. Now, dashboard, unfortunately, is now dead. Um, the project has stopped being maintained by Puppet Labs as an open source project, and is now only maintained in Puppet Enterprise as a closed source uh, project. Um, we're fairly equivalent to, Puppet, uh, to console in that regard. Um, the reporting, the ENC functions, very similar. Um, the parameter uh, information I was showing you earlier, that's sort of equivalent to Hira in the Puppet world. There are pros and cons of using each. We do have much better integration with provisioning. That's probably our key strength, is the provisioning side. Um, Puppet Labs appears to have very good integration with VMware. Um, and there's a lot of investment in Puppet Labs from them. Um, so the VMware integration in PE, I suspect, is far better than performance. But we support a wider variety of Kubi resources and allow you then to be able to migrate between different providers and different implementations. I hope that helps. You spoke earlier about um, adding data through the, through the UI. So um, adding an NTP service address or changing it. Yeah. Can you get through Foreman that data out of something like Hira or when you introduce it to Foreman it's lost, it's in the Foreman space and you can't get it back? Yes, so that's kind of similar to the previous question, is that the data informing about parameters is stored in the database, not very accessible. Um, the new API v2 exposes this parameter and class information in a fully restful manner. In fact, I've been playing with it for the last couple of days and it's, it's a really elegant API. Um, but it's, I, would only, I would suggest using one or the other with Hira or Foreman's what we call smart class parameters. Um, they are very similar, but the key difference is where you manage the data. Some people are very comfortable managing, um, let's say you're using the YAML backend for Pyra, they're very comfortable with managing the files, or they have processes around managing the files in a say, Git repo. Uh, some people prefer the single web interface that we've got in Foreman. And if you have sort of self-service type users, the single web interface might make more sense despite the lock-in of where the data is stored. Um, there's a bit more information. I've, if you search for Hira Foreman parameters on the ask.puppetlabs.com website, I've actually got a, an answer on there that compares the sort of pros and cons of each approach. Um, and there, there's a plugin as well that I wrote that blurs the distinction even more. What I'm hoping is that some, somebody will write a Hira front-end that plugs into Foreman. So instead of using our smart class parameter implementation, it goes and talks to your Git repo store and your Hira files, and then all our problems are solved. <laughs> are there any more questions before I dive in? No? Okay. So while I was talking, I'm hoping that another box of mine has installed. I want to try and do a quick start installation of Foreman on it. I can work out where I left it, and where my cursor's gone. Yeah, seems to have booted up. I have to do a bit of housekeeping. It's rude. That's not a good sign <laughs> when your SSH key hasn't been deployed. Uh, I don't even know what my root password is. Yep. Gosh. Um. Oh. Password was password. <laughs> <laughs> I could do it with a 
own screen right now. So I have just clearing out, it's already connected up to my existing Puppet infrastructure. It's going to get very confused if I install a Puppet Master as well on there. Uh, where has it gone? So as I mentioned earlier, the forman.org, there's a quick start guide on here. Yeah, big blue button, get started. I'm going to do something foolish as well as in trying to install the nightly release. Um, <laughs> this will hopefully correspond to the 1.3 release that my colleagues are making today. This could go horribly, horribly wrong. Um, so we're just going to install the, the release RPM just to get the repos on here. Instead of a 1.2 release. I seem to have lost my net connection. There we are. Is that readable for everybody? Yep. Back? Yep. Well, I've lost the bottom. Right, okay. So the formula installer uh, is this collection of Puppet modules that I described earlier. We don't need to use our wrapper around uh, the installer either. Uh, we've got many people um, who use Puppet modules directly, who are comfortable with Puppet, um, and you can use it to um, expand your infrastructure. You deploy one node and you deploy the next node through your Puppet modules and through Foreman. Self-replicating. Now this has installed the CAFO uh, program I was talking about earlier. This is new in Foreman 1.3, which means I need to make a quick hack to make it work. Bug was filed late last night when I'm testing this. Broken file. Uh, now what this is doing is it's wrapping up all of our puppet modules and telling us all of the available options um, that we can tweak during the installation. All documented as well. Every single parameter you can change. Um, I'm just going to do install. I can't see that. <laughs> Nightly repos and we'll turn on the verbose mode. This will tell us everything Puppet's doing during our installation. Now this collection of Puppet modules uh, will set up Foreman running under Apache and Passenger. So it's scalable to begin with. Repo, thank you. So we'll have Apache set up with Passenger, which means your formal installation is immediately scalable. Uh, we have people running hundreds, uh, hundreds of hosts with a standard installation easily. Um, we see it set up PostgreSQL as well, so you've got a database that's capable of doing this, not just SQLite if you uh, use the defaults. You get a Puppet Master that's set up as well, and a full SSL integration between all of these components. You know, no fiddling around with Puppet certificates to get this up and running. It's going to take a little while as it's going to cool out and install some, yum, uh, some RPMs. We'll also have a Puppet Agent running on this box itself. So we'll have Foreman managing itself at the end of this. We're then able to connect any new host we like to this Foreman server, to the Puppet Master. Uh, new hosts, if, if you've already got hosts in your infrastructure, you could do one of two things. You can either install our Smart Proxy service, which is a, a very lightweight process on your existing Puppet Master and manage your existing infrastructure. Or you can simply move all of your agents back over to your new Foreman install. Either is very easy to do. In this case, we will have a Puppet Master and Proxy all set up on here, ready to go. Sorry, that Smart Proxy you talked about means that you can have a system Puppet Master try a form and if you don't like it, you can write that out to touch. Yes, and so you can choose the level of integration really, that you, you go to. Whether you just use Puppet reporting features in Foreman, so you can set up the report processor 
on the existing Puppet Master to send information, read only information, back to Foreman saying, this is what's changed in my existing infrastructure. Or you could use Foreman's ENC functionality. And in that case, you're giving control of uh, which classes get applied to which hosts to Foreman. And that's a sort of greater level of integration. Um, what the proxy allows us to do is see what the existing setup on that Puppet Master is, what modules are available, so we can then select them in the UI. Um, it also gives us integration with the Puppet Certificate Authority. So if you're using Foreman's provisioning features, we can sign certificates for you. Or we can clean the certificates up when you destroy your host. Um, but the proxy process is quite a, it's a lightweight HTTP server, essentially. This one's on a high port, single Ruby process. Um, and you can install that on the Puppet Master, on DNS, DHCP servers, um, whether that's bind or you can even have it talking to Active Directory for DHCP and DNS. At the moment it's just doing a yum install, I think. All oh, my connections died. Watching paint dry, I'm sorry. While that's going on, what I could show you is the parameter information we talked about earlier and how you set it up in Foreman. What's available? Oh, does this have yes. a, any sort of particular version of public? No, we support, the installer supports anything from 2.6.5 up to um, 3.3.0 RC2 that they released this week. Um, the core Foreman app itself, if you don't use the installer, supports anything from 0.25 upwards. I know some of you are using even older releases. It probably won't work. We probably won't care either. Um, so in Foreman, we've got a list of all of the public classes in your infrastructure that we pick up through the smart proxy process running on your Puppet Master. Uh, we use the Puppet Parser, so any, anything that's in your Puppet Module Path we know about, and we know all of the parameters that your classes accept. Soon. We will soon now. Here we go. So this is a list of all of the classes and modules I've got available, and all of the environments that they're in as well. So we, we are environment aware. Some settings I can tweak. I thought it was really clever to move my VMs off of my laptop onto a desktop that's now miles away. Um, means demonstrations are really uh, high latency, unfortunately. It seemed like a good idea at the time. Here we see all of the parameters that this particular class accepts. Now this is a standard Puppet Labs class for managing active MQ, but this could be your own ones. And it could be high level classes, such as role or profile type classes. Um, we can choose whether Foreman's going to manage these individual parameters or not. By, there's a little flag icon that would appear here when I click this override button. Now this means instead of Puppet using the defaults, or Puppet using Hira, that Foreman is now in charge of giving Puppet a value for this parameter. We can begin by defining a default value. So perhaps by default we don't want active MQ running on a, our boxes. You know, we, we might change the default to stopped. We can also do validation. So if you've got in, uh, you know, normal users doing self-service through Foreman, they click that very tempting override button to do a one-off machine that you can change and restrict the values that the users are allowed to enter. You can do that. Validators, do validators through here. You can change the value of a parameter based on any information that Puppet can give us, whether that's a built-in fact, some information that Foreman already has, such as the host group, 
or whether it's a custom fact. So if you were to develop a fact that tells you which data center your machine is in, because you've got no other way of deriving it from, say, a custom fact of the host name, or you can add facts and change facts, match it through here. So in this case, I could say in my primary domain that I'm going to overwrite it. All the machines I'm building in this domain are going to have this value. Uh, you can run wild with this. But this is through the UI only at the moment. Uh, the new API in Formula 1.3 will give you a different view onto this data. So, while I was talking, um, the installation is completed um, without any apparent errors. And what we should be able to do now is go back here, and what did I call it? Centers Dojo. Excellent. <laughs> that didn't work, did it? No, that was the VM I created earlier. I called it Quick Start. So that was the VM I created earlier during the talk that I added the Apache class to. So you can see, again, while I've been talking, it's uh, booted up, installed the Apache class, connected with Puppet, fully configured. Quick Start was my VM that I set up earlier today, and we just ran Foreman installed on. And hopefully, you can get a taste of how easy it is to play with Foreman. I recommend doing this just on a clean you know, CentOS install or something on a virtual machine to begin with. There's no reason Foreman itself has to be on bare metal. It is self signed certificates by default, but that's quite easy to change. A wonderful plugin that just bypasses any certificate errors on here. Joys of 3G. Oh, that's trying to load a web page, of all things. <coughs> I'm going to run the. I'm going to run the Puppet Agent just once on here. So I did run puppet agent dash t for test. We'll just do a one run of puppet. It's probably already running in the background, but we'll get our first report back from the form and host itself. <laughs> yeah, that went well, didn't it? <coughs> no, I'm afraid that didn't work. Has been changed me. It looks like it worked a bit. Unfortunately, the Puppet integration has failed somewhere. It's, I don't think it had access to run the Puppet agent, <coughs> talk to the Puppet master and foreman. Um, but what we will see, at least, is the welcome page. Um, sorry about that live demo thing. basic installation that's running HTTPS with nearly working puppet integration <laughs> but you would get reports facts back from the host through that and we can point other machines at the newly installed form instance okay uh, any further questions otherwise I'm about done gosh okay well thank you very much <laughs>